I call the member for Hinkler. Well, thank you, uh, Madam Acting Deputy Speaker. I rise to speak on a divisive issue of great concern and, and of need in my electorate of Hinkler. Since coming to government, my office has been inundated with complaints and inquiries about Labor's national broadband network. Some constituents argue that only fibre to the home will suffice, and we have an even greater number of residents at the other end of the spectrum who say doing so will make the cost of connecting simply unaffordable. The median week weekly personal income in Bundaberg is just $411. And when you consider that the median, median weekly rental is $240, internet is a luxury that few in my electorate can afford. Hinkler also has an older than average population. Many of our older residents say they have no desire to connect to the internet at home, and they question why their taxes should be used to pay for it. They are also concerned about the cost of switching over their medical aids and their alarm devices. For end users that only have a home phone line with no internet or broadband services, there is a government program that may cover some or all of the cost of the necessary wiring changes. There are residents who want NBN and better telephone reception, but they do not want telecommunication towers constructed near their homes. There are whole suburbs without reliable internet connections. Urraween, Pacific Haven, Bernard Heads, Red Ridge and Buxton. In fact, according to the Australian Bureau of Statistics, 13,000 Hinkler residents have no internet connection whatsoever. 1,600 have dial-up and almost 33,000 have broadband. And just to give you a simple example, Avoca is a suburb of Bundaberg, located less than two kilometres from the Central Queensland University. It is within walking distance of the major shopping centre and several schools. Countless Avoca residents have contacted me. We have tradesmen who spend the majority of their time on the road and they rely on, the home, on their home internet to download plans, drawings and diagrams and their clients expect that they are able to access documents electronically. Now, as a former tradesman and as a currently registered professional electrical engineer, I completely understand their concerns. Uh, if you are a small business that works all day on hourly rate, uh, and then you return home uh, to do your nighttime billing, your forward planning and your quoting, uh, and with moves towards online quoting systems, in particular from government departments, you simply cannot quote on larger jobs if you don't have access to a reasonable connection. Uh, you cannot download major drawings. You can't do online training or assessments, things that you could do outside of your normal working hours. Uh, apps, updates, Facebooks and all those other additional mechanisms are very difficult to manage if you don't have a good connection. And small business is very time poor. Uh, this also includes things like their payment systems. Uh, you want to be certain that you can pay your wages of a night time. That certainly won't happen if you keep losing your dial-up connection to whichever banking organisation you may well be working with. So I can really relate to their problems. Some of those also have students who are nearing the end of their high school studies. Uh, and as a father of three children, uh, two of which are still under 10, I can certainly understand the issues around uh, download. Who would have thought 25 gigabytes of data would not be sufficient for a family in this day and age? However, with continuing changes in technology, uh, it is clear to me that you will need more and more download and more and more speed in the future. However, most of those are around portable devices. So what happens is these students who are attending university locally, well, they are forced to leave home because they simply cannot do the work that they should be able to. Downloading a lecture or submitting an assignment is near impossible in Avoca. Wireless has been costly and dropouts just continuous. Dial-up is simply archaic. The current broadband network is at capacity for the Avoca area. There are no further ports available. And Avoca residents are simply just that little bit too far from the exchange. These residents are caught in the middle of a stalemate. Telecommunications providers will not invest or extend their fixed line network until they know what MBN Co has planned. And in my maiden speech, I said I would do everything possible to provide opportunities to the young people of my electorate. And I mean it because for too long our young talent has been Hinkler's greatest export. One of the ways we can minimise this exodus will be to fix what has, to date, been the most wasteful and mismanaged infrastructure project in Australian history. In December last year, we released a strategic review of the National Broadband Network, and it found that if Labor's policies were left in place, Australian households would pay up to 80 per cent more for broadband, with bills increasing by $43 per month. The rollout is currently two years behind schedule, with final completion due 11 years later than promised by Kevin Rudd. The cost to taxpayers of completing the NBN under Labor's plan is blown out to $73 billion. That is $29 billion more than we were told. 
It's recommended the project be completed now using a mix of technologies to save the taxpayer $32 billion, keep monthly bills lower and deliver the NBN to all Australians four years sooner than under Labor's plan. Now, nine out of 10 Australians will receive download speeds of 50 megabytes per second or more by 2019. An average broadband bill will cost $72 per month using a mix of technologies, compared to $139 under Labor's plan. Now, when you consider that less than 400 million of the world's 1.6 billion internet devices are PCs, it is easy to see why using a mix of technologies is ideal. People are simply moving towards portable wireless devices. NBNCO has commenced community consultation in Bundaberg and Harvey Bay Council regions. This is for the construction of fixed wireless internet towers. The towers will cover many of the rural parts of my electorate, where the distances are too vast for fixed line broadband. Residents from Welcome Creek and Kabaram areas are invited to attend a session at St George Hall at South Killeen on April 1st, between 3 and 6 p.m. People living in Buxton, Red Ridge and North Isis can attend the Isis Cultural Centre in Childers on April 2nd. Moore Park and Avondale residents, which are in the neighbouring electorate of Flynn, can attend the Moore Park Community Centre Hall on April 3rd. Further forums will be announced in coming weeks. Now, to date, we have had a number of discussions with council representatives in regards to co-location of mobile network assets on NBN Towers. And I support Bundaberg Region, Regional Council's request for the proposed fixed wireless internet towers at Alloway and Red Ridge North to be more substantial. Increasing the size of these two towers would not only produce, in, uh, produce increased fixed wireless internet coverage, but would allow other telecommunications infrastructure to be mounted on the same tower. This would provide an opportunity to address mobile telephone black spots along Goodwood Road, which is one of our major arterials. Bundaberg Council has been very vocal about this issue and at one point accused the coalition of excluding Bundaberg from the NBN. Now, during its six years in government, Labor hadn't delivered on its NBN commitments. And yet, by their own admission, Council's entire digital economic strategy was based and adopted on Labor's promise. Now, in fairness to Council, they weren't the only ones confused by Labor's rollout maps. The maps misleadingly described areas as being under construction, when in many cases they were, in fact, still in the stakeholder engagement phase, for example. These maps were devised by a Labor government desperate to obscure the slow progress of the rollout. Now, shortly after coming to government, we amended the maps to more accurately reflect the true progress of the rollout. And separate to the strategic review, the government instructed the Department of Communications to report on quality of internet access in every single neighbourhood in Australia. The Department of Communications recently launched a website to allow businesses and households to check their broadband speeds and see where they are ranked. And I must admit, this did leave me scratching my head, wondering why would we ask people without internet access to access that information online? But those without internet and anyone able, unable to attend the community consultations can make their views known by telephoning 1800 687 626 or contacting my office. The government will use the information it gathers to ensure underserved areas get the NBN first. And of course, what is positive news for my electorate is the fact that Bundaberg is a point of interconnection for the NBN. What this means is that the region is at least one step closer to being able to connect. There is no doubt the NBN will be of enormous benefit for health, education, business and industry. And as my wife is a radiographer, which is a fairly high level uh, area for technology, pretty much all of radiography, radiographic images are now transferred by the internet, straight to a GP or a doctor. So it is essential in those areas and they're areas that should be targeted. They're the ones that we should do first and they're the reasons you should have a cost benefit analysis. But the new NBN rollout schedule will be released in 2014 along with a revised NBN Co corporate plan. So we are carefully and methodically working through the mess that Labor created. And I thank the people of Hinkler for their patience. The national broadband network that we deliver will cost internet users less and be more efficient for taxpayers. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. I thank the member for Hinkler. The Federation Chamber will suspend for five minutes.